Good day, folks. Benjamin Yurkovich here with Washington Weather Chasers. We have a lot coming down the pike today weather-wise. Go ahead and let me know where you're watching from in the comments and also what the conditions are like, where you are, and let's go ahead and jump into this. Right now, we're looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see today's system moving through. We're going to get some strong winds in the area and also rises on the rivers with rain. And then you can see the next batch of moisture that's going to be approaching the area on Tuesday night into Wednesday morning and also is going to pack a punch with winds heading towards our region. We have a lot going on. It's already getting windy out there this morning. Whidbey Island gusting to 47 has already gusted to 53. Also gusting to 32 there in Arlington might not seem like much, but it's going to increase throughout the day. And you can see the rain coming in. And we also have a mesoscale discussion up regarding heavy rainfall in this atmospheric river that's currently affecting our region. And just check out the amount of stuff that is happening around Washington State. We have wind advisories up, but also where the wind advisories are, we have a high wind watch up as well. And the high wind watch is applied to most of Washington State from National Weather Service in Seattle and Spokane and Pendleton. And there's also a high wind warning down there on the southwest Washington coast. Not to mention flood watches, flood warnings, and a winter storm watch. And we're going to get talking about that a little bit later as well. Right here is looking at the integrated vapor transport, and you can just see that Pineapple Express atmospheric river just plowing right into Washington State today. And that is going to deliver quite a bit of rain and cause some rivers to rise. And then going into Tuesday, there's the next batch of moisture, and that is going to be a strong system tomorrow. If you can see up here, we have this surface low, and it deepens as it goes off to the east rapidly, and that is going to cause some strong wind across the region, including up in the passes where it's going to be snowing. And right now, the National Weather Service has a winter storm watch up for the Cascades, and look at this. They're calling for heavy snow possible and total snow accumulations of one to three feet with winds gusting as high as 70 miles per hour. This seems like they could possibly be issuing a blizzard warning up there in the mountains, but we'll just have to see. This is looking at the precipitation totals through tomorrow morning. Quite a bit of rain for the lowlands, more from about Everett north to Whatcom County, maybe a little bit less from Everett south through Seattle, but still half inch of rain. But anywhere from three to four inches for the Olympic Mountains and two to three inches up there in the north central Cascades and quite a bit of rain from the central to south Cascades as well. And then as we head off into tomorrow night into Wednesday morning, look at all that extra precipitation that falls for western Washington. Look at this two and a half inches total for a lot of the western Washington lowlands through about Everett. And then Seattle, about an inch and a half, Federal Way, Tacoma, Olympia, inch and a half. And out here in the Olympic Mountains, almost up to 10 inches of rain, maybe eight inches of rain out there. And then five to six or seven inches in the central North Cascades. Just ridiculous. But some of this is going to end up falling as snow up there. This is looking at the rivers that are flooding and are expected to flood, the little circles are rivers that are actively at flood stage. The squares are rivers that are forecasted to flood. So we do have the White River, which is actively at flood stage right now. Been a pretty nasty situation down there. But then the Skagit River is expected to get to major flood stage, not just once, but twice again. Thankfully, it's not looking like it's gonna get up towards the record like we had just a few days ago. But still, we those communities do not need a major flooding of any kind. And then the other rivers that are expected to flood again is the Skykomish, the Snoqualmie, the Still Guamish, Cedar River, the Skokomish, which is no surprise, the Puyallup River, Skookumchuck, Chehalis, Cowlitz, Nisqually. I mean, just a ton of rivers, including other rivers east of the Cascades as well. But now let's talk about the wind a little bit. I'm sure you guys are all curious about what kind of wind we're going to be getting. This is looking at the European model for today. So going throughout this morning, wind is going to continue to increase for the region. And as we already looked, it is already gusting pretty good out there this morning in places like Whidbey Island. I've heard there's some power outages out there. But some models are showing the Painfield Everett area gusting up over 50 miles per hour later, including the European model. So the European model, by about 10, 11 a.m., has the Painfield area gusting up towards 50 miles per hour. 
and then getting those kind of gusts for a couple hours going into the afternoon. But check out the winds that are forecasted to blow through the foothill regions of the Cascades and the mountains. I'm a little surprised that we don't have like a high wind warning up for the Cascade Mountains to a certain degree because there's going to be some substantial tree damage, I think, up in the Cascade Mountains with how saturated the soils are with this. But then also places like Friday Harbor, West Whatcom County, Skagit County, going to get really gusty. And also down in Seattle, I wouldn't be surprised if you guys see some gust into the mid to upper 40s, maybe even low 50s, and then going off into eastern Washington, pretty windy as well. And that's just the first windstorm. Going into tomorrow night, this is where we have a high wind watch issued for the region. Check this out. So everywhere that is light brown is where we have the current wind advisories. But there is also a high wind watch that is issued for those areas where the advisories are as well. And the areas where there's not currently advisories is off to the east here in the east Puget Sound lowlands. We have a high wind watch up there and then a high wind watch in all these other areas of Washington state as well. But if you look at this, basically the whole entire state almost is under some kind of wind outlook. And as I already mentioned, there's a winter storm watch up in the mountains, but that winter storm watch includes gust up to 70 miles per hour. So I think they may be considering issuing a blizzard warning for the mountains with this storm. And going into that next storm, look at, look at some of these gusts on Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. This is looking at the European model. The European kind of has it looking similar to today's extent and maybe stronger east of the Cascades. But if we look at something like the HRRR model, it's showing strong winds for Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. But there you can see this huge surge of wind. Look at this. Come onto the coast. It has winds up towards 70 miles per hour, upper 60, 70 miles per hour coming onto the coast. I mean, this is going to be a super, super ridiculously strong, dynamic cold front that's going to blow through the region. And it's just going to be, it's, it's a good thing it's happening in the middle of the night. So this is 10, 11, 12, and then this is 1 a.m. on Wednesday morning. And something I'm going to be keeping an eye on here too is... It shows a westerly surge getting into west uh, and north Snohomish County. That's pretty strong. It reminds me of one that we had a couple years ago. I'm hoping this does not occur. But then also places like Seattle and Tacoma and Olympia getting gusts up over 50 miles per hour. Ridiculous wind gusts up in the mountains. And then a huge surge of wind on the eastern slopes. More wind damage expected for communities out there like Leavenworth and Ellensburg. And then a huge surge of wind out there in Spokane and eastern Washington, Pullman, etc. Whether or not the HER is 100% right is in question, of course. Uh, the NAM 3KM shows a weaker extent of wind, but still pretty strong. I mean, look at this. Here in Everett, wind gusts up over 50 miles per hour out there on the coast. Winds up towards 55, 60 miles per hour. For much of western Washington, any gusts anywhere from the mid-40s to low-50s. Going over the mountains, pretty strong wind gusts, mid-50s to low-60s. And then going into eastern Washington, wind gusts into the low-50s to upper-50s. So this is going to be a crazy storm. And a pretty crazy view of it is looking at the College to Page version of the NAM here. And you can see this cold front. Look at this solid line right here, just this kink in the line. Like there's going to be really strong winds along this cold front. And then what's interesting is right behind the cold front, check out the rain in the mountains, switch almost instantaneously to snow. I mean, very, very dynamic, going to be pretty crazy. They're expecting 70 mile per hour winds and snow up in the mountains. Won't be able to get up to Stevens Pass, but I may head up to Snoqualmie Pass early on Wednesday morning, maybe late Tuesday night, so I can be up there to experience that. And it just sweeps across the whole region as that low is deepening off to the north and moving off to the northeast. So here's looking at the European model for today's storm. And it goes off. And then tomorrow's storm. Look at this thing deepen up there by Haiti Gwaii. And then goes across the BC mountain range and boom, just rapidly deepens as it moves off 
to the east, but just a super strong dynamic storm with a really powerful cold front that's going to move across the region and probably going to be a lot of tree damage with this if this actually verifies. And the National Weather Service has issued a high wind watch. And then we got another system that's coming into the area on Thursday into Friday. It's another atmospheric river. It's primarily going to affect Oregon State, but there is going to be some decent snow totals out of that for the mountains since we are on the north side of this. And again, this is looking at the winter storm watch up there in the mountains. Winter storm watch in effect from Tuesday evening through Wednesday evening. Heavy snow possible. Total snow accumulations of one and a half to three feet. It's going to be pretty crazy stuff. And looking at the actual wind uh, watch language here. They're calling for wind gusts of 55 to 65 miles per hour possible for much of western Washington. And real quick, let's take a look at this high wind warning down there on the southwest Washington coast. This is in effect today from 1 p.m. this afternoon. And they're calling for wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour out there on the southwest uh, Washington coast. So yeah, guys, heads up. Crazy weather coming in. I would encourage you guys to keep an eye on the National Weather Service. And this is looking at the snow totals through Thursday morning, by the way. Just pretty, pretty crazy stuff. Like we're going to get lots of rain in the mountains and then the snow levels are just going to crash and maybe finally start building up our snowpack into the Cascades. Yeah, so be checking in. This is weather.gov. I would encourage you guys to go to weather.gov. Familiarize yourself with this website. You can go to where you live and click on it. And then once you have this more localized area of the map, you can click on where you live and boom, you get a point and shoot type of forecast for your area. And then you can refine it even more. If you live right in downtown, you can just click right there and get a forecast for your region, or you can type in your neighborhood. Let's say Oso right there, Oso, Washington, and see what kind of hazards and whatnot are issued for your area. And if you want to figure out how to access this page right here, you go to weather.gov, click on Washington, rivers and lakes, local rivers, observations, and you can find these things yourself. So I would encourage you guys to get familiar with these kind of things. And I'm going to be uh, storm chasing and live streaming later today. So make sure and check in on the YouTube channel for that. And I will talk to you guys later.